I stole a book from one of my clients. It drove my friend insane. Hello, I'm Kyle Brent. You may or may not know me, but I'm a psychologist and I make a comfortable living. I'm 22 and things are looking up for me, or so I thought. This whole thing started about a month ago. I was checking up on a patient of mine, Henry Miller. He has been getting better ever since a week ago when he had found a book he liked. I found it odd but the book had apparently helped him out and he is doing much better. But today something was wrong. He looked tired, panicked, and stressed. I asked him what was wrong, but he barely talked to me. I kept asking him question after question, but he was mostly unresponsive. As our session came to a quick end, I asked him if he ever finished reading the book he got a week ago, and he suddenly looked me dead in the eyes, with a serious expression on his face. Take it, he whispered. Henry, what do you mean? I asked. Please, he said slightly louder now. I don't understand. I said as he suddenly got up and held out a book in his hands. The book looked old and dusty. It had a brownish color and its pages were yellow and old. It looked like it had this large layer of dust coating it, but handprints were visible. You want me to read the book? I asked cautiously, pressing an emergency button on the wall that called down security. He saw what I did and lunged at me, knocking me to the floor and sending the book under the desk. I quickly moved my hands to defend my face as he clawed and scratched at me, screaming at me. Security was able to get here before anything escalated, and they detained Henry and dragged him away. Janitors arrived and cleaned up the situation a couple minutes later, and I was laid off from work for the day. On my way out, a friend of mine who was a janitor, Michael Beryl, pronounced Beryl, came up to me holding a familiar book. Michael was a tall and bulky guy who was around six feet tall and had short, scruffy, black hair and green eyes. He wore his janitor uniform and had a faint beard. Yo, Kyle, I found this book under your desk, is it yours? He asked in a light-hearted tone that was noticeably deep. Aye, yeah, I said and took the book out of his hands. I knew the book wasn't mine, but Henry's voice was ringing in my ears. Maybe the book had something to do with why he was acting so strange. Me and Michael parted ways, and I quickly made my way home after parking my truck into the garage. As I entered my house, I quickly closed the front door and made my way to the living room to check out this strange book. I immediately went to open it when I realized that it had a lock, keeping me from opening its contents. Swearing to myself, I made my way back to the building I worked at, only to realize that it was closed. Everyone had gone home early. I banged on the front door, hoping someone would come and let me in, but nobody answered me. Sighing, I made my way to the back and used a spare key I had and entered the building. If I was caught sneaking in, I would most likely get fired, but I knew what I was doing. Keeping the book tightly held by my waist, I made my way through the building, looking for my office. It would be much easier if it wasn't so damn dark, but as I continued looking around, I managed to find my office. I made my way inside and started looking around my office, looking around near my desk and where the scuffle between me and Henry happened. Everything looked clean and completely normal, as if it never happened. Panicking, I realized that one of the janitors probably had the key. I immediately left my office and rushed back home, retreating to think of another plan. After making my way back into the living room, I sighed and examined the book again. It didn't look any different but the keyhole seemed to resemble an odd shape, making it clear that the actual key would be much different than a normal-looking one. I entered my bedroom and sighed, quickly turning off the lights and closing my eyes, a plan clear in my mind. The next morning, everything played out normally, and I got to work a bit early to talk with some of the janitors. Oddly, Michael wasn't here today, but I brushed it off as he had many sick days that he could use whenever he felt like. For the rest of the week, Michael was absent, and I still couldn't find the key. I was clearly getting suspicious of Michael, so I decided to visit him at the end of my work shift. After getting into my car, I made my way to Michael's house. 
You might be asking how I know where he is. The answer is simple. His birthday was three months ago, and I still remembered his address. I approached his house, but something was immediately off. The house looked abandoned, desolate, and barren. I quickly made my way inside and looked around to realize that Michael wasn't at home. I looked through his house, looking for the key, but the only thing that caught my attention was his diary. Lying on the floor, pages scribbled in ink and strewn across the floor. I grabbed a couple pages and found one that was from today. It's been five days and I can't keep thinking about it. The key. The key to everything I desire, to everything I need. I know where it is, the door, the door to my happiness. I am going there today, and if he gets in the way I won't hesitate. I was in complete shock. Michael was at my house right now, trying to get the book that is in my bedroom. I grabbed my phone and dialed 911 and told them to go to my address. Then I quickly got into my car and drove home as fast as I could. I couldn't let him get the book. I drove to my house immediately rushing into my house after seeing my front door wide open. As I ran inside, I saw my house look demolished, as if someone was looking for something. I quickly made my way upstairs, grabbing a kitchen knife to defend myself. I opened my bedroom door to something horrific. Michael was in the corner of the room, book wide open in his hands as it emitted this reddish glow. Michael? I asked, terrified. He didn't respond, and kept staring into the book. I got closer and grabbed the book from him, but he retaliated, biting me in the leg, and I watched my blood ooze down my leg. Yelling in pain, I propelled my kitchen knife into Michael's arm. He let out a demonic screech as he backed away, my flesh and blood soaking his face. I backed away, stumbling as he had hurt my leg badly. He saw this and started crawling towards me, despite his hurt arm. I screamed and tried to crawl away, but I wasn't fast enough. Suddenly two police officers ran into the room and one of them tased Michael in the neck, sending him to the ground. After what seemed like hours, my house was restored to its former glory. About a month has passed since that incident and things haven't gotten better. The book lays dormant in my dresser drawer with the key in my wallet. I can sometimes hear the book whispering to me but I try to ignore it. Michael is presumably in the local mental hospital, Street George's or something. I jotted this all down in my diary as I look at the book. Maybe one look won't hurt, right?